All right, before we get into our conversation with regards to the coronavirus and its impact on tourism, I want to bring in Ayanda Mflonga, our report down in Durban. She's covering the uh, funeral service of Derek McBride. He's the father of uh, the former iPad boss, Robert McBride. And McBride Sr. passed away early this week in Durban. He's been given the a special provincial official funeral. Let's get the very latest now. Ayanda, a very good morning to you. For those who don't know who Derek McBride is. Tell us more. A very good morning to you, Blaine, from uh, the uh, Durban City Hall, where from this morning, uh, ANC members, members of the McBride family and community members from the area of Wentworth, uh, which is where Mr. McBride lived, uh, making uh, their way here to the City Hall, of course, today, as uh, the people of Gosnatel bid their final farewell to a struggle icon of uh, the ANC. And as I speak to you now, Blaine, the funeral procession has, in fact, uh, arrived here just outside the city hall. He is, of course, being led by members of uh, um, the MKVA, which is in Konto Caesar military veterans. Um, they were taking over. This is going to be the second uh, uh, part of uh, today's uh, funeral. The first session took place this morning in uh, Umbilo, uh, when uh, the MK received uh, his uh, body, draped their coffin before uh, making their way here. Of course, as you said, Blaine, Mr. Derek McBride, the ANC, described him as a man who was unwavering and uh, a principled, committed, loyal servant of uh, the uh, movement uh, who for years had dedicated uh, his life, and not only of his life, but also his family and children uh, to uh, the uh, liberation struggle. In fact, plain Mr. McBride was uh, born in Johannesburg and uh, then uh, later on moved uh, to uh, Kimberley. Um, and that was because he was unable to get into uh, an English medium school in Johannesburg. He was then raised uh, in uh, Kimberley. And during that time, his father was also very much involved with uh, the South African Communist Party as well as the Congress of South African trade unions at the time and when people coming through to his homes and meetings from a young age he then became involved and sort of opened his eyes to what was happening in the country at that time but looking back Blaine from speaking to people in our research on Mr. McBride it seems that his life was destined uh, for one day uh, to take this route of becoming a political activist uh, to be um, and to dedicate his life uh, into politics. He was a teacher, um, and uh, in 1958, the family then moved here uh, to Durban, where he began teaching at one of the uh, local schools. And, of course, then came the Group Areas Act, forcing them to move from the area of Clarewood, where they had initially come and settled. They then went uh, to uh, Austerville, where he lived until uh, his last days. Of course, a number of professions. He started off, as I said, as a teacher, but initially, Blaine, he had wanted... Uh, to have pursued his medical studies, unfortunately, financial uh, uh, difficulties at the time. He was, although he was accepted uh, into the Vitz Medical School, but he was unable to get to the school. And uh, uh, just to uh, 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 fast, uh, fast forward, uh, Blaine, in his life, um, and he didn't compete teaching, but from teaching, he became involved, uh, continuously involved in politics, and he had very outspoken views. And then left teaching, moved into welding. Uh, we understand that he was also. Uh, the first uh, black licensed uh, pest control business uh, here uh, in Durban and from welding then uh, uh, getting knowledge of uh, chemical uh, uh, companies and taking that knowledge and we understand then passing it through uh, to the MK for their sabotage uh, campaign in the installations at the time. You'd know that between the years of 1981 and 1986, he worked at the ground in the special uh, operations of the ANC together with his son who had commanded the unit and that being uh, Robert McBride. And, uh, and so from then on, Blaine, and then uh, in nine, the, the early 1980s, he then uh, was sentenced uh, uh, to 15 years in Robben Island and was subsequently released then in 1991. And as we know that according to the family in the late Two years since returning, he went back to the area of Wentworth where he's been very much involved in youth work and involved uh, with uh, the uh, community. Uh, they described him as a rebel, Blaine, as we understand that what, during the years that he was on Robben Island, he was quite feisty, quite the rebel, a man who would not take orders uh, from the prison guards. 
uh, very stern in his uh, beliefs and as you see passing it on uh, to his children as I said of course even his son Robert McGrath was his commander in the uh, MK's special operations unit uh, and the activities that they held here in Durban so uh, the ANC finding it fitting uh, and the provincial government that today they made that request to the pre president that uh, he uh, be given the special funeral plane yeah. as they want to honor a man who they said has served the African National Congress and has served uh, the country with distinction. Yeah, we're told that uh, his approach to life was this uncompromising resolve to correct the wrongs. And he was very much involved, as we've been reading, uh, with strategic interventions. He pioneered a lot of strategic interventions uh, that uh, actually led, I guess, to the demise of apartheid. Ayanda, talk to us about today's, uh, the program for today. It is a special, official funeral. What does that mean? He has been afforded a special a provincial category to a funeral and as we know that uh, would mean that uh, the South African police force are then uh, involved but largely uh, today uh, Blaine this is a, a leader this is of the um, Konto we sees when so uh, the MKMVA wanting to form quite a big part of the uh, funeral uh, earlier on as I said out uh, in uh, Umbilo where his body uh, was at the funeral parlor they were there this morning as special service ceremony was done there by the MKMVA and I'm just looking to all to my shoulder because we could see that um, the funeral cottage has arrived and the MK just preparing themselves to bring him and uh, now into uh, the hall uh, of course today uh, the eulogy is going to be delivered by the premier of the province uh, Zigalala. they are expecting uh, both uh, leaders of the ANC in the province of Gosnatal we've seen a lot of them come through this morning as well as uh, from the national government you'd even know a blame that earlier this week the ANC at the national level also issued uh, their statement uh, uh, condolences to the family but uh, saying that themselves the ANC not only here in this province but as a country that um, they have lost indeed a very dedicated man particularly uh, to the African National Congress all right, uh, Ayanda, thank you very much indeed for that report. Stand by. We'll come back to you in a short while to get an update with regards to this uh, special provincial official funeral category two.